The movie opens up at a factory where hundreds of workers are protesting against the management for a better pay and less discrimination. Amidst the protests, the factory's head talks through a speaker and calls in some representatives of the workers' union to negotiate with the department. Hearing this, the protest finally stops, and two representatives enter the department building. Meanwhile, all this is being observed by a little boy named Sanchaka, who is sitting on the roof of a nearby building. In the next scene, Sanchaka waits for his father, Rudra, who's revealed to be one of the driving forces behind the protests. Sanchaka asks him why he wishes to be involved in the riots, to which Rudra replies that one should always help others in need and fight against the injustice happening around. He further mentions that the ones who do not help others have no humanity inside them. Three days pass by, but the workers who went to negotiate with the department do not return. One morning, Sanchaka wakes up to the conversation between his parents, who are talking about the missing workers. Though Sanchaka's mother, Della, tries her best to stop her husband from going to the factory, she fails. Soon, Rudra arrives at the factory and attacks the security forces with the help of other workers. On the other hand, Sanchaka and his mother decide to check on the missing workers' house to find out the reality. Surprisingly, when they reach one of the representatives' houses, they find him inside and his wife trying to lie about his presence. Realizing that it's a trap to kill her husband, Della starts running towards the factory. Sadly, on the way, she falls and twists her leg. Not being able to walk, she requests Sanchaka to go to the factory and stop his father. Meanwhile, as Rudra is fighting against the security forces, one of the workers from his group approaches him and stabs him multiple times, killing him on the spot. Unfortunately, when Sanchaka reaches the factory, he finds his father lying dead on the floor. The little boy breaks down in tears and mourns his father's death. After a while, he gets up enraged and plots revenge. He holds a security shield and screams out loudly. As soon as he does so, a bright lightning bolt strikes him out of nowhere and throws him away, breaking the shield with great force. Surprisingly, all other shields present there also break in the same manner. Everyone is shocked to see this, and when they try to examine Sanchaka's unconscious body, they are also pushed away by the lightning force. The scene then fast forwards a few years ahead when Sanchaka's mother tells him that she needs to visit the city to buy some groceries. The little boy doesn't want to be left alone, but he has no choice but to agree. A few days pass by, but his mother still hasn't arrived home. To make matters worse, everything edible present inside the house is finished, and Sanchaka is compelled to venture outside in search of food. In the following scene, Sanchaka can be seen being chased by some street boys. After an intense pursuit, they finally catch up to him and start beating him badly. But right when they're about to smack him with a large piece of wood, Another guy named Agung arrives there and saves him, fighting against the street boys. When Sanchaka wakes up, he finds himself sleeping inside a room with Agung sitting beside him. The latter tells him to be careful with street kids and also promises to teach him some basic steps for self-defense. At night, the two decide to board a train to a different city so that they can start a new life. Agung, using his speed and agility, easily climbs on the moving train but poor Sanchaka is left behind. Now, with no one to take care of him, Sanchaka starts living in the streets by performing menial tasks on the streets. In the next scene, we see a grown-up Sanchaka running on the streets. He has now started working at a paper factory as a security guard. Obeying Agung's suggestions, he ignores people fighting on the streets and continues his normal life. Despite all this, he's still afraid of lightning and hides at a place whenever it occurs. The scene then shifts to a party where two people are talking about a person named Pankor. Apparently, this guy faced a lot of problems during his childhood. They discuss Pankor's family being burnt alive and how he survived by hiding inside a cupboard. The scene then flashes back in time when Pankor's uncle leaves him at a lower class orphanage where children are abused. Afraid and fed up with the regular abuse, 
Pencor conspires with the orphans and kills all of the cruel orphanage owners. Sometime later, he gets his father's inheritance, and with its help, he looks after the orphans. Back to the present, Pencor is a criminal leader who controls a large portion of Indonesia's corrupt legislature, and is also in charge of an army of orphans who have been trained as killers. He devises a plan to contaminate the rice supply with a substance that damages pregnant women's fetuses. The legislative release of an unproven antidote developed by an unidentified pharmaceutical business is then demanded by a large number of individuals. The dispute divides the parliament into two factions. One is dominated by Pencor and his friends, who are against it, while the other is led by lawmaker Ridwan Bari and his colleague Durga, who draft a bill to distribute it. During the party, Pankor approaches Durga and offers a handshake, but the latter refuses it, making Pankor angry. Later, when Durga is returning home, Pankor's men capture him and his family and kill them mercilessly. In the next scene, Sanchaka hears some noises from his neighbor's room and finds a couple of thugs threatening a poor lady, Wulan, for money. Seeing this, Sanchaka cannot stop himself and confronts the thugs. He then uses his superior fighting skills to easily defeat them. After the thugs leave, Wulan expresses her gratitude to Sanchaka for saving her and her brother Teddy. At night, while Sanchaka is working as a security officer in the factory, an even larger group of thugs attack him and beat him up badly. Presuming that he's dead, they throw him from the top of a building while it's raining heavily. Surprisingly, when a flash of lightning occurs, it passes through Sanchaka's body and wakes him up. The lightning cures all the wounds and brings him back to life. The next day, when Sanchaka visits the market, he notices Wu Lan planning with the market owners about ways to save themselves from the thugs. Just then, the same thugs who beat up Sanchaka earlier arrive at the scene and start chasing him. But this time, Sanchaka has the power of lightning, and he defeats them easily. Seeing this, an impressed Wulan asks him to join their fight, but Sanchaka refuses and goes to work. Unfortunately, the group of bandits set the whole market on fire and destroy everything. As a result, a worried Wulan approaches Sanchaka and tells him that if a human cannot help others in need, then they are good as dead. Hearing these words, Sanchaka remembers his late father and decides to fight for the people. He then wears a mask and starts confronting the evil groups around the city. During one of his fights, an unknown person stabs him and takes away a little sample of his blood. Despite this, Sanchaka is not afraid, as he knows that his wounds will be healed by lightning. Meanwhile, the news broadcasts that the majority of pregnant females are suffering from a deadly disease after they started consuming the newly distributed food items. It also mentions that the children of the infected women will turn evil and will be the main cause of the increase in the crime rate around the country. All this is being executed by Pankor and his men to earn more profit by selling antidotes to the disease. In the next scene, Sanchaka learns to control his lightning powers and prepares a special suit for himself. He then fights against the mob groups around the city and prevents innocent families from being misbehaved and threatened. Sanchaka's new costume is nothing less than that of a superhero's costume. He then begins assaulting the thugs, including violinist Adi Sulaiman, a member of Pencor's vast network of orphan agents, and the one who's responsible for putting fire in the market before. Elsewhere, Pencor's bodyguard, Aziz, along with his friend, dig a place and extract a secret box from it. Meanwhile, lawmaker Ridwan meets with other government officials and claims that Pencor is responsible for distributing the poisoned rice around the city. They then decide to work together to take on Pankor and approach the superhero Sanchaka for assistance after hearing his name in the news. Ridwan also orders the officials to distribute the antidotes to the poison. On the other hand, Pankor is presented with the corpse of Adi Sulaiman. Seeing him dead, Pankor becomes angry as he was an orphan and was being cared for by his organization. Pankor demands that all the orphans be reunited and fight against the new superhero for what he did to Suleiman. 
Shortly after, the orphans receive a call from their father and start wreaking havoc across the city. They begin by killing the officials who disagreed with Pencor's plan. When one of the assassins is about to kill Ridwan, Sanchaka arrives there wearing his suit and defeats him. Ridwan then approaches Sanchaka and requests him to help save the people. In the following scene, the government officials somehow manage to agree on distributing an untested antidote to the people out of exigency. At the same time, Ridwan receives a call, informing him that the factory about to distribute the antidote belongs to none other than Pankor. Hearing this, Ridwan concludes that if Pankor is not stopped, no one would be able to stop the phony antidotes from being distributed to the people. Realizing that Sanchaka is the only one who can stop the vehicles carrying antidotes, Ridwan calls him and explains the situation over the phone. Surprisingly, as soon as Sanchaka hangs up the call, Pankor arrives at his place with his orphan assassin army and orders them to attack him. Even though he's weak, Sanchaka fights back and defeats them one by one using his powers. When Pankor is about to attack Sanchaka from behind, Ridwan arrives there and shoots him dead, hence saving Sanchaka. Elsewhere, people are about to receive the fake antidotes, which might make them sick or even kill them. Realizing the danger, Sanchaka sets off on a motorbike to stop the distribution convoy. With the aid of a mysterious lady, Sri Asi, Sanchaka is able to catch up with the distribution caravan and gets a sample of the fake antidotes. He then uses his superpower to destroy every bottle of antidote, as they exist at the same frequency as each other, similar to what he did with the shields at the beginning of the movie. As a result, the danger is finally averted, and all the people are saved from the deadly antidote. In the final scene, Pankor's associate, Gazul, destroys a wall to discover a hidden ancient tomb. He then brings out the secret box from earlier and sprinkles it with a few droplets of Sanchaka's blood, which was secretly extracted before. After this, he merges the body and the head, raising Ki Willowook, a dangerous medieval warrior, and informs him of Sanchaka's coming by calling him Gundala. The movie ends with Ki Willowook ordering Gazul to manage an army of assassins to ensure war with Sanchaka.